Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This episode 108, and I figured even though I have the uh, separation anxiety episode kind of finished filming, I'm still going to hold off and we'll release it like another day or two, uh, probably closer to the week, you know, another day or two, I guess will be closer to the weekend anyway, uh, but I'll probably release it sometime this weekend, maybe even on Friday if I can uh, have it done edited by then. Uh, but that'll be the end of our comic book discussions for uh, the past, like the stuff that we've talked about in the past. We still got Along Came a Spider and uh, Sinner Takes All and The Death of Anne Wang. We got all all those stories we're going to talk about uh, soon too probably sometime in April we'll go through all that stuff but what I wanted to do is leading up to April I wanted to talk about some current comic books uh, there is uh, the Edge of Venomverse Venomverse and Poison X which is like the series that just crossed over with Venom and the X-Men recently those three stories are done and completed the first two are in trade paperback the Poison X one's coming out soon and Venomized uh, which is like the conclusion of Colin Bunn's kind of Venom arc you know his like trilogy and then Edge of Venom versus like the setup to the trilogy uh, that's going to be coming up in April and it's a weekly series and a lot of you guys have been asking me to do reviews and you know me I don't do reviews in the traditional sense. I like to do breakdowns and discussions about things and say what I think works and doesn't work. So it kind of comes across a review, like a review, but I don't really rate it or do anything like that. Uh, so what I wanted to do was break those three stories down leading up to Venomized. And Venomized comes out like in two weeks. So I think next week we're going to do three comic book episodes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the first one will be Edge of Venomverse, second one will be Venomverse, and the third one will be Poison X. And I'll do a breakdown episode of those three storylines to get us all ready for Venomized because I really want you guys to go out and buy this book. The artist on this book on Venomized is so awesome and he did the art on Venomverse so we'll get into all that next week, but I really want to get, you know, help try to get sales on the Venom comic books up right now because I'm very excited about the new writer coming on in uh, in May. And I really am excited about the conclusion of Colin Bunn's story here with Ivan Coella, who is the artist on the book. Uh, and so I went to the comic book store today, and then I also got a comic book in the mail today. So we're going to look at these real quick, and then I got a very special surprise for you. So this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer episode, probably closer to 20 to 25 minutes, but I'm going to edit down what we do next. But I'll get into that in one second. First, I want to show you some of the comics I got today. Old Man Hawkeye, number two, second printing. I pretty much got this because they put Venom on the cover. Uh, as you know, in the comic, uh, Venom has taken over Multiple Man from the X-Men universe. And so every time you know he multiplies, it's another being with a symbiote. And now he's building an army of Venom symbiotes uh, to go after Hawkeye. So it's pretty cool. So I picked up the second printing of that, and we'll probably do digital codes for these next week to give out You know when we do our, um, our next episodes for the comic books. I'm also going to give out the digital digital code to this, which is the Red Goblin. It's Norman Osborn bonding with the Carnage symbiote in the current pages of Amazing Spider-Man. This is a second printing of issue 796, the first appearance uh, technically of the, the, the Red Goblin. I already have the first printing, but I like the cover of the second one. And to have Venom and Carnage next to each other in new forms on new hosts, I thought that was going to be kind of cool to have. Uh, I also picked up Iron Fist, which ties into the uh, Damnation Doctor Strange storyline. Yes, Doctor Strange in this book is a Ghost Rider, and so are some other Marvel characters. And for those of you who've been wanting to uh, get my review or my breakdown of the first five chapters of this, this is chapter six and seven, um, and there's going to be 15 chapters total, I believe. So I'll do them in you know five episodes, you know five chapter episodes. So we'll do three episodes, and I'll do the first one probably next week for you guys. Uh, it won't be a Venom vlog episode; it'll be a, a Doctor Strange episode. Uh, I also picked up Thanos number 17. My roommate got me hooked on this book, and it's really good. And yes, that is Silver Surfer, uh, you know, and he has the Infinity Gauntlet. So, uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff happening in that book. I don't want to spoil it. And the last thing I got was something in the mail addressed to the Venom vlog, which is really cool. And this is from Marvel Comics. And I, as you guys know, I have a subscription uh, to the Venom comic book. And it get, they get shipped to me every uh, every issue that comes out. But this one is uh, our digital code for today. It's our giveaway because it's the conclusion to the Poison X story. Obviously, I gave one of these codes out recently because even though I get them in the mail, I still buy them at the comic book store as well. And so I have a digital code, boom, right there. Check that out. First person to put that code in gets the comic book. And uh, this is the conclusion. We are going to talk about this storyline next week. It's the first time that Venom and the X-Men team up, but it also continues the storyline set up in Venomverse where this new race from another dimension called the Poisons, which kind of feed off of symbiotes and twist them and make them part of their race, which is the Poisons, uh, they are now going to infiltrate the Marvel Universe and only Venom can stop them. So I think this is a new status quo for Venom. He's going to 
I think help save the Marvel Universe and it's going to change his status in the Marvel Universe and that'll lead into the writer of Damnation, Donny Cates. He's one of the writers on this book uh, and he's also the writer of Thanos. He's going to be the new writer of Venom starting in May with a new issue number one and I'm really excited for that because I think he's going to take Venom into new and interesting directions from what I heard of the synopsis so far. So I can't wait. Enjoy that digital code and now what we're going to do for this episode is we're going to do something I've been wanting to do for a while uh, even more than talking about Spider-Man 3 which we did in episode 100. If you haven't watched that go check it out uh, but today we're going to talk about the other time that Venom showed up unofficially not licensed by Marvel or anything like that. He appeared in a short film called Truth in Journalism. And this was a short film directed by a guy named Joe Lynch. And it's something that you can't really find on YouTube anywhere. And I think it's for copyright reasons. They Anyone who posts the whole video up gets their audio taken out of it and stuff. So I don't want that to happen to my video. So what we're going to do, this is like a 15-minute movie, a uh, short film about Venom, uh, mostly about Eddie Brock. And just like all the rumors out there, this like it's like 90% of this is him as Eddie Brock. And at the very end, he becomes Venom. And it's obviously done with a very low budget. It's done in black and white. It's really cool. It's about a documentary film crew that comes from France to America to capture the daily life of journalist Eddie Brock. This is Eddie Brock on the rise in his career, talking about Sin Eater, getting all the details about that, making a name for himself. So this you know, documentary crew comes from France and they want to document the, the rise of this great journalist. And then throughout the story, we're going to see uh, that the the truth comes out and Eddie starts getting shamed and he's, you know, he's you know not respected by his peers. And you also see how he gets some of his stories. He lies. Uh, he's kind of a dirtbag. He sets up the truth. He, he twists the truth to make it true. And uh, obviously anyone we know who does that is just pure poison and, and pure venom to the system of uh, journalism and telling the truth. And that's kind of where Venom gets it. So this, you know, gets his name from. So this is Venom without Spider-Man. This is what everyone says, oh, Venom can't be made without Spider-Man. This little short film was really cool. I really dug it. So we're going to watch it, but I'm going to edit down so you won't see the whole thing. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to the full movie down below, and I beg you to go watch it. If you're a Venom fan and you've never heard of this, go check this out right now. It's a really cool movie. It came out like in 2013, so about five years ago now, and it stars, uh, I forget his name, it's uh, Ryan Quantin. Uh, and Ryan is from, uh, from Australia, I believe, and I first saw him in a movie called Dead Silence, which I actually kind of like that movie, and he, I thought he was really good in it, so he gets cast as Eddie Brock here. So without further ado, let's watch this, and we'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. And like I said, I am going to chop this up so you won't see the full movie. So if you want to see the full movie after you watch my video, or if you don't want to watch my video, check the link down below and check this out because this thing is really good. So let's get to it. Awesome. I like, I like how they do the 7654. It's like old school. This looks like it's kind of shot maybe like, you know, it says like the 1984 Entrepreneur. Uh, so it, it's, it has like a late 80s vibe to it. Uh, there you see Eddie Brock chilling out on the right, um, and this is a this is the documentary. This is what the the guys were trying to you know put together, um, and to try to spotlight Eddie Brock. Well, sometimes the best leads are right under your nose. What are you offering? You stay on a car long enough, and you'll get a syllabus. Are you sure? For an Australian guy, he does a pretty good New York accent. It's not like really thick and overplayed. He mentions KB toys, so you know this is not set current day. Or could be. KB might be coming back. So yeah, he's like he he lied to get in here. He says, "Hey, I'm forensics," and he's coming in to get his story. And these these French documentary guys are filming him right now. That's why there's subtitles in French. And we put the caution in cautionary tales, you know, and. And being aware the crime is out there, the people of this city can live their lives important. In fact, I I'm think the, the boom mic came in there. A public service. I'm the hero out there. See? No, how was that? I like this because it's like it shows he's he he's kind of a scumbag, but he doesn't know he's a scumbag. He, he or he doesn't admit it to himself. Look at this, he's like tampering with evidence and everything. Hey, hey, you, yeah. You're not supposed to be here. What fucking department are you with? Forensics. Yeah, you better report this. Yeah, you better get the hell out of here. Turn that goddamn thing off. <laughs> Freeze frame. Freeze frame. I love that. That's so cool. They're putting like 80s music in. Uh, that's, oh, that's so good. Um, and you see him staging stuff like uh, some of these shots. Like 
the thing is it's called truth and journalism and obviously that's an ironic title because eddie is not actually after the truth he's out he's out to forge the truth and that's kind of their take on eddie in this which i think is really really good Hey, it's tricky, tricky. Somehow, the run DMC. Happy couple. I give them a week. Before they spit up? No. Before they're. Touch <laughs> more. Look at it. Look at him. See, you can already tell. Like, I, I like this take on Eddie. I think this guy does a really great job. Um, and you can see he's got the cutoffs. He's in his apartment. It's simplistic. He's working out. Um, so yeah, see. And he's like, he's totally like drinking his own Kool Aid. That's and that's what I like about this. Is uh, this is kind of how Eddie was portrayed in a couple stories, um, especially in Dark Origin, which came out obviously a couple years before this in the comics. And in Dark Origin, he's that's what he does. He he kind of you know fudges the truth uh, or forges the truth, I should say. Um, and he considers himself doing a public service, keeping the people of New York informed properly, which he's not doing, and making them feel safe, which he's also not doing. So, oh yeah, so, oh, look at that guy's getting, st oh, jeez. So you can see Eddie intentionally, in this scene, intentionally doesn't go save the guy. And he's like, oh, wait, and he caused himself to buy himself a few extra minutes to let the guys do what they want to do, take the guy's money, and stab him to death. And then he chases him off. Um, because he says, hero stories don't sell. You saw the guy. Oh, <laughs> he threw up. Let's go find a phone. Call him in. Come on. Come on. Go. And you can see these guys. Like then this is where they're starting to see. Like, all right, this guy is. Let's finish up. Go get a drink. He doesn't have any morals. You know, he's, he's broken. He's he's here just for these stories, and uh, that's it's very telling. And he covers him up with a Daily Beagle newspaper. Cinema. 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 <laughs> you guys, you guys get everything you need. Everything you need. I'm, I'm giving I just you. love all the music playing in the background. Right. It's, uh, it's pretty it's awesome. More than enough. I don't want to lose uh, your good. love it's tonight. Yeah, you. I won't sing anymore. Sorry. Thank you. You're only hoping this documentary would shed some light into everything going on the whole controversy crap you know what I, I want my side to be heard the real truth but, but the the problem is is that uh, we've been here for over a week right and uh we've used our entire budget and we only have a few more uh, rolls of film yeah yeah, yeah 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 well so i'll i'll, I'll pay i'll pay i'll pay <laughs> this is the least i could do right <laughs> And you can see he's like trying to lure them in. You know, he's like, "Hey, you're my chance to tell my side of the story." With that, you know, with everything coming out. So, and he's like using like the, "Hey, you know that guy that got killed in the alley that we watched him die? Yeah, we can. You're like that'll pay me, and I'll give that money to you guys. You can buy more film stock, and you can help me tell my story." Um, I can see Eddie's like, this is where the twisted side starts coming in because they're like, hey, we want to know a little bit more about Sin Eater and the thing that's going on and, and how, you know, how you got fired and stuff. And he's just like, let's discuss this another time. Yeah, you can see him, you can see the wheels working. Like, all right, these guys are, they're getting in, they're not going to be my ticket out to the truth, like, or to what I want people to perceive as the truth. Um, so even though this isn't comic book continuity, you could almost kind of fit it in to the, to the moments leading up to maybe Eddie thinking about going to the church to commit suicide. Because um, you can see in this moment here, this film crew has let him down in some way. Um, and he, he doesn't feel like they're going to be able to help him do what he wants to do. And we can discuss this another time. 
discuss getting you some more funds for our film. Okay? Silly. Silly one. He's a like total douchebag. Like these guys do not like him at this point. So here we are at the end here, and uh, and they're basically telling... Oh, there's a Duran Duran poster in the back. They're saying, like, hey, look, we can't make this film because with you paying for it because it, it interrupts the integrity. Like, it, it makes people... People will think we're not telling the truth because now you're funding the project. Um, so, like, it, it, it ruins our credibility of, you know, telling the truth. People, we need to be impartial. We can't take funding from you. And so Eddie's like, oh, I get it, I get it. So now you see his clothes have changed. He's he's more, you know, a little bit more debonair. He's got the high neck thing. And he's like, hey, let's, I want to show you guys something cool. I want to show you my room. You guys haven't been in my room yet. And now you see it literally looks like the room was a serial killer. There's newspaper articles all over the wall. There's one light and there's a bed mattress on the ground. And you'll see like Venom stuff and Sin Eater body count now up to 10. So a lot of, I mean, they totally did their comic book research on this. Or maybe the guy just was a big fan and knew it all already. Uh, but Joe Lynch crushed it, I think, on this. And I like the look. It looks real, it's a, it's a very interesting take on a fan film, for sure. And so uh, now he's brought them into his room and he's he's got his, his you know, he's laid the trap, he's got his web. And his prey is now stuck in his web. So he locked the door. They're locked in. And now, almost like American... This feels like a very American psycho, where he's like plays the music, and he's feeling the vibe of it. And that's the biggest thing about this, is I, the, the vibe feels very American psycho-ish. And of course, he shut the window to dull the sound of them screaming, probably, and then also the uh, music turned it up as well. And so here we go. Our big moment. Ah, oh, that's so cool. For a cheap effect, that's neat. I mean, the suit looks a little ridiculous. It's clearly just a skin tight thing. Um, this is not going to probably impress most of you guys visually, but it's still, still really neat. And now the the audio guy is down, so now you're just getting room mic from the, uh, the they're getting room sound from the camera, and not the boom mic. The boom mic was crushed, so it's not picking up sound like that. And this shot's neat. You just see him twitching, and the eyes are kind of twisting and moving a little bit. And now you see the mouth open and the tongue. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and so, like I said, if the movie is going to have this kind of tone where it's like you're interested in the character, you're, you're interested in Eddie Brock, he probably, because Tom Hardy's playing him, he's probably not going to be this level of scumbag which is a little unfortunate, but at the same time, I mean, Venom has a hero side to him, an anti-hero side, so they'll probably play up a guy who clearly makes mistakes and, 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 you know, makes the wrong choices sometimes, but I feel like ultimately he'll probably, you know, he has to, you know, save the day in a way, by the end, I'm sure. Uh, so, but this was neat. I thought this film was really great, and I think Joe did a fantastic job, and then there's their, like, Twitter names there, so you can follow them. I think most of them are still on Rainfall Films, and I'm pretty sure most of them are still on uh, on to, on Twitter and stuff. So if you contact these guys, you know, let them know they did a good job, because I actually really like this little short film. I think they did a phenomenal job with it, but I want to know what you guys think. So if you want, go watch this movie, the full, like, 15, 16-minute version down below, and I think that it's at a Vimeo link, because like I said, you can't find it on YouTube, but on YouTube, you can find some behind-the-scenes videos and, uh, like, some making of stuff. If I find any of those, I'll try to put links to those down below as well, uh, but this will be on Vimeo, so you can go check it out there. Uh, yeah, but this is, I don't know, I want to know what you guys think. This is Adi Shankar. Uh, I think he did like low budget, ver he produced like low budget versions of uh, Power Rangers, you know, back when they did that. And I think he just released a, a uh, what was it, a Mr. Rogers, like uh, a gritty take on Mr. Rogers. And I think he does, he's a producer of Dread and the, uh, the Castlevania cartoon series that's on Netflix, which I actually really, really dig that, and I love Dread too. So I can't remember all what he's involved in, but I know I see his name a lot when it comes to like things that are 
of like nerd culture because the guy clearly is a fan of this stuff and I thought this was really good so like I said I know I didn't react to the full video I want to save that I didn't want this video to get taken down and I didn't want to disrespect these guys they worked really hard on this movie and I want you to see it in its entirety and comment on their page comment on their Vimeo account let them know they did a good job write them on Twitter whatever you gotta do let them know the Venom vlog sent you I appreciate you guys watching and supporting the show as always so I'm just gonna leave it at that like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the next episode peace